so much for tuning in and spending some time with me tonight. Um, I want to make for you guys a jicama, quinoa, soybean salad. So I'm calling it like hashtag JQS. Okay. So you guys, I go to Melissa's Produce. Um, I've been there a few times, and it's a great facility in Vernon, California. There's just tons of fresh produce, vegetables, and fruits, and just all sorts of things that, like, I didn't even know ever existed. And so every time I leave, I was here, I was there a few weeks ago. Katie Chen had her book launch, and she was cooking some yummy recipes from her cookbook. So she was having her demonstration there, and so... Um, a bunch of us were there watching and a lot of people were there buying her cookbook. But every time you leave Melissa's Produce, they give you a ginormous box full of goodies. And this time it's like, look, I got this this big jicama and I got a whole bunch of how precious. Look at their little teeny baby red onions and white onions and yellow onions. Can you guys see that? Oh, yeah, you can see them in the cup. You guys, I've never seen little baby onions like this. And then I got some pine nuts, but I also got some soybeans. And these are, um, yep, yellow. These are young soybeans. When they're this light color, this light color green, um, they're a young soybean. Because a lot of times, you know, like soy milk is white. And you see other soybeans like in the store and they're like a yellow color or whitish sort of almost tan color those are older soybeans so these um these little soybeans were taken out of the pot when they were young <laughs> and then we got some quinoa now look i have red quinoa this is quinoa not cut <laughs> and this is quinoa when it's been cooked there's red there's black there's um the regular color, which is just like a, a whitish beige color. Apparently there's like a rainbow of colors when it comes to quinoa, but I usually, um, I've only done the red and the plain. So <laughs> this is, I'm using the red tonight only because I have the red and the white, but I'm specifically using the red for a pop of color. Okay, so every time I get these baskets, or these box, boxes full of goodies, it's like whatever I'm left with, the soybeans, the quinoa, and the jicama, it's like, you know that show that they have, I don't know if it's on Food Network or Cooking Channel, but like you get a basket full of goodies, and it, I think there's like five ingredients or less, and you have to make something out of them, regardless of what's in your basket. Okay, so I sort of felt like that's what I was doing with these leftover goodies, and it's like, hmm, what can I make? What can I make? And, um... I mean, all, all three of them are just, they're so nutritional and healthy. It's like, there's a salad. Okay. So I'm going to make a salad. <laughs> um, quinoa is going to be the base of the salad. But um, I want to use the jicama. I want to grill it. And I want to, um, I want to uh, use some of the jicama raw. We're going to make some matchstick cuts. So your ingredient list, you guys. Jicama, quinoa, you can whatever color you desire. Um, you're also going to need soybeans and cucumbers, um, onions, pine nuts, and then, you guys, I'm going to make a tangy dressing. Um, it's a vinaigrette. It's just limes and garlic and olive oil and the rind of the lime and some salt and pepper. So I think everybody should have a few um, vinaigrettes, you know, in their back pocket tucked away. So when people come over, they can whip one up real quickly for salads instead of just, you know, bringing over a bottle of ranch or a bottle of Thousand Islands. <laughs> okay. The grill is already going. This is my Cuisinart 4 in 1 tabletop grill. So it's already super hot. Now, you guys, with a jicama, you can't eat this yet. Um, okay, you, I mean, you can if you want, it's not good. Generally, you don't eat the skin of a jicama, so you want to peel it off. This is a really big jicama, so let's, let me see if I can even cut through. That way I'm just getting a piece of it. 
first, and then, there we go. See, it's just, it's white flesh on the inside. You guys, this large jicama, you can become in all different sizes, but it's also known as the Mexican yam, okay? Um, I, to me, it sort of resembles like the texture of water chestnuts, and we use jicama in a lot of Asian cooking, we saute it, but today, I'm trying to, I cut it to see if I can, okay. Ooh. Um, today I'm gonna use it uh, raw, <laughs> but I'm also gonna grill it because you guys know that when you grill um, vegetables and fruits, it always brings a little more flavor up to the top. Okay, this is ridiculously fibrous. All right. Thank God I don't need a whole lot of that. It's also going to last you a long time. <laughs> oh, I want to tell you guys too. Um, it's super, it's like low in calories, high in fiber, but it's considered very similar to the properties of like a potato. I think it even has more carbs than a potato. So you just kind of, you know, just eat it in, um, you know, in portions. Don't like overeat it. Don't, you're not going to like steam this and walk around eating a jicama. I mean, you could. You could if you wanted to. But generally, you don't do that. Mm. Okay. All right. Now, gosh, that thing was hard. I thought, seriously, like, the ones I've had before are much smaller. <laughs> and so I thought it was going to be a lot easier to, um, you know, with the vegetable peeler. All right. I want a couple slices because I want to put them onto the grill and we're going to let them grill up while we cut the rest of the ingredients that are going to go in our hashtag JQS salad. All right. This, I'm just cutting some slices. Um, this is not only going to add a little bit of texture, but I want it to give a completely different flavor profile than the raw jicama. So it's like you're getting two for one when you put this in the salad because you're getting the grilled, and then you're gonna get some matchstick ones. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the cut up, the matchstick cuts in just a second. Super healthy, you guys, super healthy salad. So I have the griddle, um, I already heated the griddle, and then I put a little bit of olive oil on it, and, um, well, it's canola cooking spray, and now I'm just gonna let those sizzle up probably uh, for about 15 minutes, the whole time that we're gonna be getting the rest of the ingredients together. Okay, I hope everybody's having a great day. Yay, I'm so glad you guys are here with me on Tuesday nights doing this, watching, getting these yummy recipes. Okay, so now, lots of vitamins, lots of minerals, jicama, if you have not had it before, like Google jicama recipes, there are so many recipes, it's such a versatile, root um i highly suggest trying it so this is something that i was already familiar with but i wasn't sure how i was going to use it and so now we're obviously making a hick of the salad <laughs> okay so for matchsticks you're just going to cut slices just like this growing up okay now so you've got look so I'm just my slices, boom. And then I'm gonna lay them on top of each other. Oh, good, you can see. And then you're just gonna slice them like little matchsticks. See that? Yay! Slice are just little matchsticks. And you can even go a little bit thinner. It's totally up to you. Get some of these sliced up. Okay. Consistency. You want to be consistent with your matchsticks. I think I need to get, I just want a few more slices here. So you just cut them in slices, stack them, <laughs> just like that. Just stack them on top of each other and slice them very, very thin. So get it, they're called matchsticks because they look like matches. You know those matches in a box that you usually use for camping or 
They're just those matches in a box that <laughs> have the sticks on the inside. So this is what they resemble. Okay, so we have our match sticks. Look at Pretty, pretty. Now, um, I'm kind of just like, okay, again, the texture is like water chestnut, but it does taste like um, a pear. A not so sweet pear. Good. Very good. Okay. So here's the. I need. Where can you see these? Oh, perfect. Okay. Our little matchsticks. Yeah. Now, you guys. Okay. We got the quinoa. Now, with quinoa, I did. I already cooked this ahead of time because I needed to like cook for 20 minutes. And what you're going to do with quinoa, you can eat it cold or warm. But because I'm putting it in a salad, I, 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 it's been in the refrigerator. So quinoa, usually, the ratio, just like you're doing rice, you can actually put it in a rice cooker. I just put it on a, in a saucepan. Usually the ratio is one part quinoa to two parts water. Now, a lot of people are doing one to one ratio because that was the measurements a long time ago when quinoa came out. And um, now quinoa, it's processed, a little, it's processed a little differently, so it doesn't need as much water. Now the red also, it's a little bit, um, the red also has a more uh, nutty flavor. And I did four ounces of quinoa to I did six ounces of water. And I just brought it up to a boil, and then I turned it down and just I put a lid on it. And I let it cook for about 25 minutes. Now, this is the texture. They're just little pops. They just pop. Um, I want to tell you, it's also considered a superfood. Can you tell I haven't eaten dinner? I'm, like, eating everything that I'm putting up tonight. I'm going to eat a soybean, too. Um, quinoa is, like, it's a superfood. Um, again, I'm using the red for a pop of color. But it is going to be the base of our salad. Um, gosh, you guys, you can put quinoa in soups. You can use it to top salads. Um, it goes really good with a big old juicy medium chunk of sirloin. <laughs> okay, so quinoa. Now, <laughs> it has grill marks, you guys. <laughs> I love it. It's also turning a, a translucent color as it's being cooked. Okay, so next we have the soybeans. Now you guys, again, you know like when you go to the Japanese uh, restaurants, uh, <laughs> I'm eating, <laughs> you go to the Japanese restaurants, um, you get a little bowl of edamame. Soybeans are, okay, how do I say this? Edamame are soybeans inside pods. So you get them, you know, they keep them up. They bring them out to your table. There's a little bit of sauce on them. Sometimes you can dunk them in the soy sauce, but you grab, there's like a little appetizer. And you grab it, put the whole thing in your mouth and you go like that and get the seeds out of it. The little, these little soybeans, you pull those out. You don't you generally eat the skin, but you can gnaw on the skin a little bit because it does have a little bit of flavor. But soybeans are what's inside the pot. So these are no longer called edamame. They're called soybeans. Now, I know like, there's a little bit of, oh, they're super good for you. Oh, they're not super good for you. Um, I do know that it's the only um, complete non-animal protein, but it is still considered a legume. So you can eat it. You cannot eat it. If you want to substitute out the protein, add chicken. Take out the soybeans and then add chicken or add some turkey or add some beef. Um, you can always substitute out other options for this. So again, the green ones are young soybeans, okay? Huge amounts of proteins and vitamins. Huge. Okay, what we got next? Cucumber. These are my little Persian cucumbers. I love these. I like to keep these, wash them up and then keep them in the fridge and then like, I get, I'm craving like a little snack and so I'll go by. I'm not going to eat this. This is the only one I have and I need it for the salad. Um, you know, walk by and you just uh, uh, eat the whole thing. It doesn't... The end, the butt, the top, everything. It's delicious. So for this, adding this to the salad, I'm just gonna do a little side cut. 
a side slicing. That's what we're going to call this. <laughs> we're going to call it a side slice. <laughs> Just like that. Don't forget, you guys, you want to always work with a sharp knife. A sharp knife. <laughs> a sharp knife. Oh, it's going to make your life so much easier. Because again, remember when you're chopping, it's such a, a natural extension of your hand. So actually when you're working with a dull knife, it's more dangerous than with a sharp, uh, with a sharp knife. Plus when you have a sharp knife, it kind of just does the work for you. You saw how easy it just glides. Totally. It totally just glides. <laughs> okay. So now we have, oh, onion. I want to use some red onion. Again, I'm using red onion for a pop of color. You guys, look. They look like little Christmas tree ornaments. I've never seen, I've never seen little red onions like this. Or little white onions. Or they're like little midgets. They're like the midget onion. The uh, midgets of the onion family. They look exactly like a red onion. Like a white onion. Like a yellow onion. But... <laughs> They're so small. Anyways, so this one little red one is going to be perfect for the salad. Going to cut the ends off, just like that. A little harder to peel. I tried peeling one of these the other day. Um, the outer layer, you know, it's just it's more, it's a little more delicate. Okay, this one peeled just fine. Hmm. Oh, look at that. Okay, so I take it back. It's it is more delicate, but not so hard to peel. Same thing. Look at these pretty little onions. Look how vibrant. Oh, the color, everything. So you guys, our salad is coming together very very nicely. So with this, I'm just gonna slice it. Everything. It's like everything is gonna have. Like, no matter where you put your fork, you're going to get a little taste of all the ingredients because everything is consistent um, in regards to, like, the size that's going in to this salad. Does that make sense? It made sense in my mind, and then as it came out of my mouth, it's like it didn't sound like it made sense. But I know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. I feel like I'm just making miniature everything tonight because everything is just so small, working with miniature foods. Okay, slicing, slicing. Um, you know, you guys, sometimes it's like salads. Like people have salads. Um, and it's like or people are coming over. You know, it's like, okay, I'm bringing brick salad. I mean, I've been guilty of this. And it's like, oh, yeah, let me just bring over some spinach and I'll bring over a bottle of ranch. Um, and, and that's it. It's like I feel like salad sometimes gets, you know, the butt end of the deal. It's not, and it's like an epic thought. You know, a salad. So I'll just run to the store and I'm just going to pick up a salad in a bag. Which I'm going to tell you right now, those little salad in a bag, the Chinese ones, are, I can eat that whole bag. It's, I love it. I don't know what it is about it. It's, I love it. But it's like it can be such a compliment to your meal. Again, a wonderfully tasty, delicious salad goes great with a big, medium sirloin steak. So... I always think that you should have a few recipes like for uh, ingre uh, for the dressing because I think people get a little stuck. They don't realize how simple it is to make a salad or a vinaigrette. And so your thought is, I'm just going to grab a bag of salad and I'm going to go grab a bottle of um, a bottle of a dressing, whether it's Thousand Island or whether it's uh, you know ranch. And so it's like it doesn't take much. It doesn't take a lot more time to just whip up a recipe for a vinaigrette. Like tonight, we're using fresh lime juice, we're using the rind of a lime, um, olive oil, some garlic, that's it. I'm gonna put it into a jar, which I need to get that jar. Oh no, I'm gonna put it in this first. Um, and you're gonna just mix it all together, and then that's it. So, a few, a, li a little bit ago, I um, did a video where I showed, uh, showed the viewers how to make three different vinaigrettes. One was an Asian vinaigrette, one was a, um, a mustard vinaigrette, and one was a white balsamic vinaigrette. And you guys, literally, I have, like, here's my, I have got Asian ginger, white balsamic, and then just a vinaigrette. And, like, the white balsamic, listen, extra virgin olive oil, balsamic, and honey. 
that's it. You put it all into a jar, you shake it up, and you're ready to go. And it's going to like amp up the flavor of your salad like nobody's business. And people are going to think like, oh my God, how did you make that? What is it? I'm not joking. The Asian ginger, which is a huge favorite. Every time I make that, it's like, oh my God, I want this recipe. It, there's just so many delicious flavors. But it's literally two tablespoons of each. Check this out. Soy sauce, EVOO, honey, water, rice vinegar, and ginger. That's it. You throw it all into a jar. Take the jar, put the lid on, and just shake it up. So you guys, what I did was I went ahead, I posted the video on my non-channel earlier today, and it has the video there with all of the recipes, so you guys can watch it. Just scroll back through my non channel. Well, it's the last post that I did. So um, it has the three recipes, and it has the ingredients and how to make them. And trust me, right on a post-it like I do, keep them right here so they're just ready to go, and boom, you got delicious uh, dressing. And you know what? You don't even have to just use it on salad. You can use it to, um, do you have some dry chicken? Like you've got some chicken breasts that, you know, you maybe did not eat all them last night for dinner. And you have them today. They're a little bit dry. You can put some of this dressing on it. You can put the dressing over, um, well, salad, like I said. Um, you could use it as a dip. You could use it as a marinade. It's, it's so versatile. Okay. Oh, I just cut off Melissa's head. Well, these are pine nuts from Melissa's, which also make a great topping and have tons of health benefits. Okay, our salad prep is ready. So we have quinoa, we have matched hickama, we've got some Persian cucumbers, we have soybeans, some very dainty, beautiful, colorful red onion, and we also have what we're, we're grilling, our um, sliced hickama. This is going to make a beautiful presentation, you guys, on top of the stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the dressing. So I have, um, I'm just putting everything into a Pyrex cup, and I need, I think I need a little more olive oil. Hold on. You can use olive oil. I always, general rule of thumb, I use olive oil for cooking and extra virgin olive oil for dressings. However, I don't think I have enough for half a cup. So I'm gonna do, you guys notice, I'm like totally like hunched over. I have this huge thing on my back and I feel like I've been walking like this for two days. <laughs> and I went over and had dinner at my good friend's house last night, Karen and Richard. And it was so funny because they were like, you look like a 90 year old woman. And I'm just like, I don't know what happened. Like I was trying to dig a hole but I didn't realize, like, I was out in slippers and my pajamas. And I don't know what I was doing, but I was trying to dig a hole. I was, I'm trying to do something in my backyard. Um, it, yeah, it wasn't a good thing. And the next thing you know, it's like, I'm sitting down writing an article. I can't get up. I'm like, oh, my God. So, Richard and Karen, like, first I got a massage, and then I got one of those heat patches put on, and then they took out this ginormous vibrator. It's a massaging vibrator, not like that. It just, anyways, it's a big vibrator. Like, it was like this big, <laughs> and just like, oh my God. and I'm just like, oh my God, it felt so good. But now it's like, I, 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 could, I just caught myself in the monitor. I'm just like, I'm still a little hunched over. I'm trying to, I can't stand up all the way straight. But anyways, okay, so let's get on with the rest of it. Half a cup of olive oil. <laughs> Okay, I'm using a little bit of olive oil, but we're gonna pretend the whole half a cup is extra virgin olive oil, E-V-O-O. -O. Okay, half a cup of olive oil. I'm gonna do the juice of three lines, three full lines, and I love using, you guys, this. I got this at a tequila event, actually. Hedda Juna Tequila. They were having an evening. There's their little U, their symbol. And they were giving these metal gadgets out. I use this every single day. I love it. Okay. That was only half a lemon. I need three, whoa, three lemons. You guys, lemons, limes. I'm telling you, I've got, I'm stocked with limes and lemons. I just, I love them. I add them to everything. All my soups, my dressings. 
uh, on my chicken. Mm. This really, <laughs> I can't believe that I used to do this. Like this, uh, 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 and think I'm getting so much juice out of it. I started using this and I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. It's ridiculous how much juice comes out. Just like that. Mm. I mm, just love lime. Love it, love it. Okay. Let me make this up this good. I think I might need a little bit more. Now I want to add the zest. Where's my zest jar? I want to add the zest. It's going to get a little, um, it's going to be a little bitter. Not a whole lot bitter, but it's just going to add another element of flavor. So, just a little, just a little bit, not a lot. See, just see it better back here. <laughs> okay. A little bit of the zest. Now I need some garlic. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of garlic. I love garlic. Garlic, we'll load it up. Garlic. A little pink Himalayan sea salt. You don't, this salt goes a long way, you guys. The pink Himalayan is much more salty than like regular white sea salt. And then I'll add a little bit of fresh cut pepper. Just a pinch. Just a pinch. I, I don't know what a pinch is to you, a pinch. Everyone, just a pinch, right? A pinch. Mixing it up. You can also add a little honey if you want to add honey to this. To, if you're looking for something a little more uh, sweet, sweeter. Okay, I'm going to add one more lime. What do I do now? One, two, three. Three limes. Now I'm adding a fourth. I want it to be a little more tangy. Remember, I love, I love, love tang. I love, not tang, like in a can tang, but the tang from lemons and limes. All right, make sure we got it all, all the ingredients in here. We got the garlic, lemons, uh, the lime zest, the limes, salt, pepper, extra virgin olive oil. Perfect. I'm gonna add a little more pepper. Yeah, I need a little more pepper. When you get to this point when you're done, like mixing everything in, this is when like, oh, maybe I wanna add a little more garlic. Maybe I wanna add some red pepper flakes. Maybe I wanna add some more salt. <laughs> I can think I already said pepper. Just do it, you can't go wrong. Maybe you can add some cumin, um, add some rosemary. It's like once you have your base, of your vinaigrette, you're you're good to go. I know I left this spoon. I'm putting it back in here, but the dressing is for me. Okay, now we have to assemble. Let me get some stuff out of the way here. We have to assemble. Now you guys also know you don't have to throw these away. You can put them down in your garbage disposal. Run the disposal, and these will clean the acid and the lemon. It'll clean up the garbage disposal. Bam. Thank you, Martha Stewart. Or, oh, I have to guess something funny. So, my mom, okay, so you know, I, I, my mom, her English is a little broken, and so what you do is like, try to tell me about something that she found uh, from watching Martha. And so she said, Kim, Kim, I, I saw something today on Martha Stewart. Uh, and then she just went on and on and on to tell me what she was watching. And I was like, okay, you guys, I like told you over <laughs> oh my god and then so i was asking her i'm like well, what, what you watch what where huh and she was like it's mata stool it's a mata stool see her she popular famous mata stool oh my god she was talking about martha stewart i could i could have oh martha stool martha stewart there you go okay let's <laughs> Sometimes you just have to hear her in person to really get the full effect of things. Okay, I think I want to put this, I want to try to get a glass full um, to put this in, just so you guys can see it. It's visually really, really pretty. Uh, I was going to... in a 
glass because I want you guys to be able to see the different layers. So, um, look, if you want to do individual salads for people and say you have like individual glass bowls and you want to make, you know, like when you go out to eat or you're going to like a banquet, they give you the salad. It's not like a big salad put in the middle of the table and everyone digs it in. So we're going to do that here. We're going to make individual salads because I want to show you guys, um, look at it. I mean, we work, these are such beautiful colors. And so watch. Okay. Oh, my hands are dirty. Hold on. I don't want to get my little stains all over the glass, all these little grease stains. Okay. So, here we go. <laughs> Thank you guys again. Oh, let's assemble this baby. Cheers to a fabulous week for me and for you and for everybody. Mmm. Did you guys hear that Angelina Jolie and um, Brad that are getting a divorce? I don't know why that affected me so much this morning when I heard it, but it's like, ooh, right there. Okay. You're going to take a little bit of the quinoa and place it in the bowl, in your cup, <laughs> in whatever serving vessel you are using. We're probably going to do this a little bit differently now since... I'm going to put all of this in a cup. Okay, so we're starting with the quinoa. So this is like a salad to go, salad in a jar, single salad, something like that. All right, what am I going to do next? Um, I think I want to do some edamame. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a little papa bean next. That's pretty. Oh. I feel like we're at a salad bar. And it's like you're topping your own, you know, your own salad. Okay, so then I have a little bit of edamame on top like this. And then I'm not going to do cucumbers because those are green too. Then I'm going to do my matchsticks. But now, you guys, since I am putting this in this glass, I'm going to cut the matchsticks in half. So it's a layer of white so they fit into the glass. Okay, so this is a great idea. If there's just two of you, oh my God, spend a little bit of extra time and make the individual servings. That way you can set them down at the table. Um, it could be like your first, you know, the salad portion before your meal. Do a little more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I totally feel like I was on that show, like where you have to take ingredients and you just, boom, have to create something. On the spot. Okay, then I'm gonna add. Oh, we're gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and do the onions because you know you don't want your top flavor to be onions. Maybe I should put them. I should have put them in between the quinoa and the soybeans. All right, now because I did, did I get everything? Okay, hold on. Okay, I got the quinoa, soybeans, the raw jicama. Mm. Okay. Uh, the red onion. Now I am fanning out <laughs> the cucumbers on top. You guys, this looks so pretty. Okay, now, boom, 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 boom. Okay, I want to add some pine nuts to the top. Oh my God. You guys, this is Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And maybe a few soybeans. Okay, let me just add a little. It's a different color than the cucumbers. Now let me do a few of pine nuts, just three or four on top of that. And now, let me turn this off. I want to take, can you guys see? Oh, wait, it's hot. Hold on. The roasted jicama. Oh, they're so pretty. The roasted jicama, you guys. Look, can you see the little, yeah, the little grill marks? You can kind of see it. You can you see it? All right, now I'm going to make a little slit and I'm going to put it on the cup. 
Well, I was. I thought it was going to be a good idea. I'm not sure. They're still hot. They're steaming a little bit. But look at that. That looks really pretty. Okay. And then you're going to take um, some of the dressing. Now, at this point, if you put it in the little mason jar, you can obviously put the mason jar on the table and let your guests shake it up and then put however much dressing they want. But if, um, if you're dressing it yourself, just go ahead and take a tablespoon and just drizzle it right on the top. With some of that garlic goodness. Oh, look at this. Get it on the side so it goes down. You can see it drizzling down so it gets the rest of the ingredients. Yeah. Look at that. I wonder. Oh, I said so pretty. I'll take a picture here in just a few minutes, um, and I'll put it up on to, I'll put it up on the uh, on my mom page so you guys can see it. Oh, that's so pretty. You guys, it looks amazing. Okay, salad in the cup. <laughs> it wasn't exactly. It was supposed to be a bowl, but. Look, here's another idea. Okay, so what it, this is the hashtag JQS. It's not really a hashtag, you guys. I'm totally just doing that. It's like a shortened the jicama quinoa and soybean. Um, super healthy. Again, you can substitute out the soybean. If you need another protein, meat. Substitute something else. Um, and you can still do the layering if you want to do it in a cup like this. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. I should have sat in a chair this whole time. Um, thank you guys so much for um, hanging out with me tonight. I really appreciate it. And if you have not subscribed, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And please make sure to follow me on all social media sites as well. There's Twitter, there's Pinterest, um, Instagram, and everything is under at Caroline Beamley. And uh, that's it. Thank you guys again so much. I hope you all have an amazing week. Mwah, happy Tuesday. And we'll see you next week. Oh, you guys, next week we're going to be broadcasting live from um, Hamilton Winery in Washington State. So we're going to go behind the scenes and check out what it takes to um, create um, a winery and plant grapes and have a successful um, harvest. So tune in. That'll be next Tuesday at 630. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. Bye.